Greetings, unsettled souls. Indeed. We're going to do a 10-minute show today. Why would that be? Well, I'm going to go straight to screen share and give you some idea. That needs to be up for five seconds. Why would that be? That might be because yours truly has entered another InfoWars contest. Yep, that's how most of you found my show to begin with. Remember? Well, I have it in Photoshop because I would like InfoWars to know that I can run Photoshop. I have a degree in IMT. Um, this is filmed on a regular camcorder. But, uh, I mean, not camcorder, excuse me, regular video cam on my computer, I should say. And um, I know how to use better gear. I just don't have it. Here is my work. It has been shared. I wrote that for Teddy Stick. It has been shared on InfoWars. Um, Rob Dew has even shared my work on his page, on his Twitter account. And uh, I've even um, contacted a number of people since I have begun doing this. And I'm delighted, absolutely delighted, to enter another InfoWars contest. Um, I know that... Al, um, Alex Jones likes to interview a number of people, such as Al Jorgensen from Ministry. Some people would think, isn't he a bit of a leftist? But he did. About a month, about two weeks ago even, I interviewed Obituary. I have, um, I'm a writer for the Conservative Daily Post, and I've written about everything from North Korea and taxes to a woman who taught her cats to steal from a house. Um... I have press passes. I covered um, Donald Trump's speech. I covered the protesters. I've interviewed Black Lives Matter protesters and managed to have a calm discourse with them. And now I am proud and honored to be entering the InfoWars contest once again. So I'm going to, head, going to go ahead and start presenting myself as an InfoWars reporter. I put that out there for those who are watching these because I will be making more than one of them as I enter the contest, and I have decided what better way to enter this than to read my own work. This was published just today at the Conservative Daily Post. USDA slaughters kittens since 1970. They refuse to allow the healthy animals to be adopted. Now, many of you know, if you're regular InfoWars um, viewers, you know there's there are very few things, and I mentioned this in the article, there are very few things that unite the left and the right um, in 2018. It's very rare. It's as rare as hen's teeth, okay? However, when it comes to treating animals cruelly, that is a problem. That is something that unites both sides. It's something that neither side will tolerate. If you watched InfoWars earlier today, I'm sure you saw uh, quite clearly that Roger Stone had addressed this issue. We're going to go ahead and talk about it here real quick. The federal government slaughtered kittens. The very sentence seems like something that some conspiracy nut job concocted in his parents' basement, I wrote. But it is not. The Washington Times has reported that since 1982, the federal government was slaughtering perfectly healthy puppies for no other reason than they were done experimenting on them. They even write that very thing has been happening with kittens in Beltsville, Maryland. And of course, uh, the, the Washington Times is calling for it to stop. Any sane person would call for this to stop. Listen to this. The United States Department of Agriculture breeds hundreds of kittens each year so that they can be fed toxoplasma-infected raw meat and scientists can collect parasites from their feces to use in experiments. At a mere three months old, once the testing is completed, they are murdered and incinerated as if they were rubbish or mere packaging. That might sound extreme. It's not extreme. It's happening now. Your tax dollars are paying for it. Every time, every time you pay your taxes, you're paying for this. this is, it sounds absurd, but it's true. I wrote, this detestable USDA program has been getting money to the tune of $650,000 a year since 1970. That means that everyone is paying through taxes. All of you listening to this, that's true. For kittens to be pumped full of parasites and then put down for no reason whatsoever. 
Some will argue that the government must conduct such tests, and perhaps the case can be made for that. However, these kittens are perfectly healthy. Once the parasites are removed and they are able to live long, happy lives as if no testing had ever been done on them, there are, they are no different from any pet that picked up a parasite, went to the vet, and was cured. So you want to, wait a minute, Sam, wait, wait, pause. Are you saying that the government is killing kittens who are healthy after they're tested on? That's exactly, unfortunately, what I'm saying to you. The white Coat Waste Program is the group that has exposed this most callous of programs. It's terrible to think of how many wide-eyed cats have met their end in the years since it all began. Quote, the USDA kills all of the kittens, even though it admits that virtually all of them are healthy after the experiment. And that's according to the WCW website. Literally, their own words. Now, they try to give themselves a little bit of wiggle room here. Watch this. It's priceless. They also say expert, not uh, the government, of course. They also say expert authorities, including the American Veterinary Medical Association, the American Association of Veterinary Medical Colleges, and the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, agree that toxoplasma exposed cats are safe and adoptable because after just one toxoplasma exposure, cats shed the parasite, become immune, and won't transmit to humans or to other animals. To put this into perspective, I wrote, the kittens were infected in order to create a life-saving concoction like toxoplasma, and it works. Even with this being true, the cured kittens are slaughtered as if there were no cure. The USDA has said that claiming that they, that they don't put down 100 kitties a year, and then they say it's a serious overestimation. But documents obtained via the Freedom of Information Act seem to support the claim, however, regardless of what the USDA wants to admit. In other words, they're trying to hide. They're realizing now there's about to be a huge storm raining down upon them. That data says that they shall use, according to their own words, now listen, 100 kittens yearly so that the number of cats proposed to be used in an estimate based on work in previous years. The number was based on their own words. Beyond that, even if only 50 were killed, I ask, why? Why kill even one healthy cat at least, without at least trying to find it all? Thankfully, uh, Representative Mike Bishop is asking questions, and... Uh, he wrote a letter to the Secretary of Agriculture, Sonny Perdue, uh, said, put simply, the program creates a life to destroy life. While I support the objective of making food safer and protecting people, so he's not some PETA nut job here. He's in favor of all of that. But we must ensure taxpayer dollars are used effectively, efficiently, and most of all, of course, humanely. And um, I wrote, while many things divide Democrats and Republicans in 2018, a love of kittens is one of the few things that unite both sides. Representative Jimmy Panetta, Democrat from California, has worked with Bishop to introduce the aptly named Kittens in Traumatic Testing Ends Now Act, and it would put an end to this in human practice. Read the rest of my work at the Conservative Daily Post. But needless to say, if you go to... Um, usdastinks.com, as uh, you saw earlier here on InfoWars, you will notice that there's a petition there. You can, you can get a hold of your representative very easily. It takes no time at all. And you will be able to make a difference and to make this stop. Friends, the InfoWars contest wants it to cut at 10 minutes, so I have. The logo has been viewed the whole time because I bought the shirt from your site. Needless to say, that's the movie I entered. I want to thank you for launching another contest. I want to thank everybody for voting for me. And I want to thank Alex Jones for being in my movie, Bilderberg, why, why It Mattered to Me. He stopped everything he was doing to talk to Christelle and I. Hey, let's face it. The next logical step is to simply hire your next Ohio correspondent, Sam I.B. from The Correct Views. Good night. God bless.